This is 7 National News and in our top story, President His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan has sent a cable of condolences to Indian President Pranab Mukherjee on the death of former President of India APJ Abdul Kalam. According to a report published by Emirates news agency WAM, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the UAE Vice President, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, and His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces also sent similar cables to the Indian President. Following last week's announcement to deregulate the price of fuel in the UAE, the Ministry of Energy has today announced the new fixed price for petrol and diesel in the country for the month of August. Starting August the 1st, 95 octane or special grade petrol across fuel stations in the UAE will cost 2.14 dirhams per liter, up from 1.72 dirhams per liter. Super grade or 98 octane petrol will cost 2.25 dirhams per liter, up from 1.83 dirhams per liter that residents currently pay. While the price of petrol rises, the price of diesel, on the other hand, has been set at 2.05 dirhams per liter. Diesel currently retails at 2.90 dirhams per liter in Dubai and the Northern Emirates, including Sharjah, Ajman, Omal Kuwain, Ras Al Khaimah and Fujairah. The current price of diesel in Abu Dhabi is 2.35 dirhams per liter. The ministry's move to deregulate the price of fuel is a result of a decision issued by the UAE cabinet, which is based on a study submitted by the Ministry of Energy. The Fuel Price Committee, which includes representatives from the Ministry of Energy, Ministry of Finance, ADNOC Distribution and ENOC, will meet in the last week of every month and announce the next month's prices on the 28th of the previous month. In a detailed FAQ section on the Ministry of Energy's website, the, minist the Ministry also quashed rumors that UAE citizens will be given special fuel discount cards to avail a rebate in petrol prices. The FAQs suggest that while the petrol price at the pump may witness a slight increase, with diesel becoming more affordable, the ministry expects a boost in business activity in the country. Over 4,000 food outlets in Sharjah have been fined for violating health and hygiene regulations since the beginning of the year. Inspectors from the Sharjah municipality visited 29,499 establishments, including food outlets, food manufacturing companies, cafeterias and restaurants and found that 4,213 eateries were violating health and hygiene regulations. Some of the outlets were slapped with hefty fines of up to 10,000 dirhams, while others were shut down temporarily until they rectified the violation. According to the municipality officials, the inspectors also checked the level of personal hygiene maintained by the employees of food outlets and checked if the employees were abiding by the health protection rules related to, to, to food storing, preparing, distribution and temperature. The inspection campaigns also included awareness activities to educate food traders about the importance of the proper storage of food and the importance of maintaining the proper temperatures for food items. The Sharjah municipality is also urging the public to call the municipality on 993 for any complaints regarding food violations. A year since its launch, the RTA has announced that their shuttle service for airport passengers going to the hotels has witnessed increased demand with daily ridership from all three terminals reaching 500 to 600 on average. Skybus, a dedicated bus service transport for passengers going to and from the airport, is anticipating increased demand following the impact of fuel prices on the cost of taxi fares and private vehicles. Charged at 15 dirhams per passenger per journey, the RTA has revealed that the buses now operate to over 120 hotels across Dubai and that there are plans to extend the service to Abu Dhabi and Al Ain in the future. A total of 12 routes operate from the airport with buses running every 30 minutes, which the authority believes is a convenient option for passengers arriving at the terminals. A total of 30 buses have been allocated for the service 
However, at present, due to the low travel season, the authority is operating a fleet of 15 buses from all three terminals. Commenting on the service since the inception, Mohammed Abdullah Al Ali, the director of bus operations at the RTA, added that hotels in Dera and Al Barsha continue to be the busiest destinations from the airport. According to the RTA, the, serv the service is also open for residents who live close to hotels, as all passengers pay for the tariff using the null cards. Actually, the most most area or the most zone is set, set be mainly to in, in Deira. We can say that Deira, Dubai, and uh, also some of the uh, passengers they came to go to like to Arbersha behind like Emirates Moderate of uh, apartments in there. Especially the people is coming for from Saudi Arabia or from Kuwait or from Qatar, so from GCC mainly they are go for that area. So that has given us a lot of you know uh, vision to plan more and more. Uh, the service should be frequently visit that area. According to the uh, area provided to the airport, we cannot put the long queue of the hotels. The, the, the availability of the buses, it's there 24-7. Uh, each layby have almost two, two buses for each terminal. Uh, once they will move immediately from the uh, stations, we have stations here in the airport in the first floor. Uh, we, it can exactly uh, directly feed the, the people uh, if there is any, uh, we can say, uh, highly request of that service and this is as well also uh, directed from the people each 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 area we can say there is uh, a local supervisor which is which is uh, uh, on site if he feel any requirements more immediately he'll contact the OCC our operation control center in order to send us the the buses so we are not waiting to to uh, to, to be without buses immediately we are taking uh, actions for availability of our buses Retail brand Splash has honored 21 unsung heroes in the country with a pure gold trophy in the shape of a heart to those who they say have made a difference in the lives of many by showing kindness and humility despite facing adversity. Announcing the winners at an awards ceremony held on Monday in Dubai, the CEO of Splash, Raza Beg, said that the Splash Heart of Gold initiative has been instituted as a tribute to those unsung heroes who devote their time, money and effort selflessly to the cause of humanity. The CEO added that there are many people in our society who have selflessly served others, helping them before thinking about themselves. According to Beg, this is what makes these heroes so special, describing them as having hearts of gold. The recipients of the award were gathered through online entries where individuals were requested to explain their cause with supporting pictures or videos. During the month of Ramadan, Splash picked up one nominated person every day for a period of 30 days and has recognized them for their contributions to improve the lives of others. Event organizers say that they hope this initiative will motivate others in the country to come forward and help the needy. As a business, as we grow bigger, you want to give back to the society. And there's no way better giving by honoring the unsung heroes, people who selflessly do for, for the community, for the largeness, for the greatness. And I think so today is a very special event for us at Splash because we usually have very elaborate and very large fashion events with the who's and who. And today we are actually honoring the real people. So it's a very special evening. The Middle East is known for charity because when you see that wherever there is a famine or there is a drought or there is anything, the Middle East always comes forward and does that. So uh, the region already has, has uh, an emotion of uh, giving back. I thought with the Ramadan, which is the month of giving, it, was just, it just fit in very well and therefore we did it. Among the winners is Najender Vijay, an expat Indian, who is trying to create awareness about a widely prevalent human trafficking problem in India by climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. Also recognized at the ceremony, Anum Chowdhury from Pakistan, who is running a social enterprise project called Sina in Karachi, which employs widowed women in Pakistan in order to educate them and provide an income through their embroidery work. So I wanted to do something more. So I was just waiting for the right time. And now uh, Kilimanjaro, it is the tallest mountain in the entire, on the planet. And uh, 
people also have died while trying to climb that mountain. So uh, I just wanted to go out of my comfort zone and uh, uh, do something for those girls. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to raise $10,000, out of which I've raised 5000 So there's another 5000 to go. So all this money goes directly to those girls and uh, to the Rescue Foundation that is based in India. And they rescue girls uh, from brothels and prostitution and they give them a livelihood so that they don't go back uh, to the prostitution. And with regards to the Kilimanjaro, it's the tallest mountain in the world. It takes eight days to climb. And uh, uh, yeah, so I just wanted to go out of my comfort zone just to make people understand that we all owe it to the society. So if we all come forward and do something towards the cause, uh, we can make a difference. That everyone is born neutral and it's up to our parents and the people who raise us to teach us good from bad. And for me, the most important thing was I really took those values that I learned from my parents and my grandparents and they were instilled with me throughout my life. And for me, the biggest thing was to be able to make a difference in the lives of these women, these women that I was constantly seeing traveling back and forth to Pakistan. And I don't know, I, I feel like, you know, everyone has the power to do something. And I, I was given the right opportunity and I just took a chance and I tried to do my best and I will continue to do as much as I can. Charge's baby-friendly campaign has launched its official Facebook, Twitter and Instagram accounts with the aim to connect mothers in the Emirates and highlight the benefits of breastfeeding to women. The social media platform will work as a hotline for breastfeeding mothers to communicate with lactation consultants to discuss their personal challenges. According to a local report, followers of these bilingual social platforms will be able to ask questions about breastfeeding and interact with experienced mothers and child health care consultants for tips and advice about breastfeeding. According to campaign officials quoted in the report, a group of highly qualified and reliable consultants who have experience in leading hospitals and healthcare centers in the UAE and the region will be able to or be, will be available to interact with the public online. The new platforms will provide information, facts, photos and reports about the campaign and its activities and will provide a live chat service in Arabic and English to answer all questions followers may have. And finally, in the bulletin, with school holidays in mid-flow, families can experience one of the top water park attractions in the world without even having to leave the UAE. Aqua Venture at Atlantis de Palm has been voted the best water park in the Middle East and the fifth best in the world in the TripAdvisor Traveler's Choice Water Parks Awards. The influential travel site has announced this week that the award is based on millions of traveler reviews. The 17-hectare beachfront water park, situated on the apex of the Palms Crescent, boasts two enormous towers packed with rides, including the world's largest diameter slide, the world's first vertical banking family ride with a double hump at the end, the first double slide within a slide experience, the world's first known zipline circuit to be integrated into water park tower, and unique marine animal interactions with rays and sharks. Aquaventure was ranked fifth in a list that featured Siam Park in Spain, Beach Park in Brazil, Water Bomb Bali in Indonesia, and Disney's Typhoon Lagoon Water Park in Florida in the first to fourth, respectively.